Remember when we were talking about what a slow start Kawhi Leonard was off to? You were, not we. <laughs> well, he was. He was. I wasn't making it up. He was I, off he to a well, slow start. Well, but the other... Us other wees knew he was going to come back and play well. I didn't say he wouldn't. I just said he was up to the slow start. He was one of nine in the first half. It wasn't going great for him offensively. He's got 30 now. Six rebounds, three assists as well. Uh, and they've stretched out the three to 101, 92. Do you like what you see and, and how open a question is it what Utah is going to be at the end of games? Well, they ran it kind of a 1 4 flat, and Mitchell got the ball stolen by Harkless, reaches in. He kind of comes in there and takes it, makes, makes, takes a tough floater that shoots an air ball on. You know I mean, you got to find out. Uh, Quinn Snyder's got to find out what sets work the best for his closer to put him in. Is it going to be a mid screener roll? Is it going to be an ISO? Is it going to come off the screen or, or whatever? But I don't think they figured that out yet. And again, I know he's not playing well, but I, I'm a big Conley fan. I've seen Conley close games. I've seen Conley make so many intelligent decisions down the stretch. You know, he's not even playing right now down the stretch right. for Utah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, and we, you know this, Mac, you know it, the coach got to help the player. Mm-hmm. When you got a guy like Mike Conley struggling, and he is struggling yeah. bad, and you're going, in, I mean, you're six, seven games this season, he should have done shook off some of the dust, so he's struggling. So Quinn Snyder's got to help him. Right. You know, you, you tend to sit back and say, well, he's a veteran, he'll play his way through it. No, you got to put him in some sets and situations where he can go back and look at some of the front line that out-rebounded the Jazz by 17 and outscored them on second chance points by 21. B, what are, what are your takeaways from the second meeting between the Clippers and uh, Utah, other than the Clippers who lost against Utah and Salt Lake City without Kawhi Leonard are better with him? Yeah. yeah. Well, and, that's, my, that's my contribution to the discussion. What do you have? Well, you know, when you look at I mean, you just talked about they got 50 points off their bench. And then that's a common thing for this team with Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell, the guys that they have coming off. And so when you can get that kind of contribution on a night in, night out basis with from your bench, the starters only score 55 points. And so when you get that, you have balanced attack. Uh-huh. Um, you have one team that can kind of wear you down and then your bench that can come in and wear you out. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and so you have uh, obviously Kawhi to deal with uh, from the starter standpoint in terms of who you're going to shut down and game plan against. Um, and then you come in with a guy like Lou Williams off the bench who can light you up and score 50 on any given night by himself. Um, and the energy that Montrez Harrell brings, the, the, the length and the defensive ability and tenacity of, uh, of, of Harkless, and we yeah. saw him make some key plays down the mm-hmm. stretch. Patrick Beverly, who gets underneath your skin and, you know, and he'll guard anybody from one to five and not back down. Um, and, and like you said, and then that's not even with, with Paul George still on the sideline. So when you sprinkle him in and you have a guy like Kawhi who can shut in football like Richard Sherman back in the day who you didn't want to throw on his side of the field, you have Kawhi that can do that. When you add Paul George to that mix and he can shut down the other side, I don't know how teams are going to score against this team. Well, I mean, you look at this game now. If you're Doc Rivers, you're happy with this win. And look, as a coach, we'd rather win a game like this when we shoot bad and, mm-hmm. and things don't go right because it's a tough game. Mm-hmm. Those games be a character. When you beat somebody by 30 and the other team quit midway through the third quarter, you're not getting anything from that. But a game like tonight, when you didn't, when Kawhi didn't shoot good and you struggled in other, other areas – but you put together a strong enough defensive effort, rebounding. You did all the other things besides shoot the ball well, and you won the game. This win feels good to the Clippers because they know they beat a good team on a night when they didn't play the best. And this is the type of game you're going to play in the playoff. Everybody, right. it's everybody every, The shooting is not going to be great. Guy's going to have a tough time getting the ball in the hole. But you find a way to win. And I'm with you. As a coach, you walk in and say, fellas, we got some grit. And you, you walk in the coach's room and everybody sits down together Opens a beer and says, hey, we're, we're okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because these guys are, you know, these, we got some fighters. That's and that's right. when you know you've got fighters, you know you've got a chance because they're just going to keep swinging. And you keep swinging. I tell you, you connect to somebody at some point. The guys, that, uh, <laughs> the guys that just quit and throw their hands up like, we don't have it tonight. Those guys drive me crazy. The Clippers don't have a lot of quit, but they have a lot of individual guys. Patrick Beverly, Harrell, all the, Kawhi. They, those guys don't have those guys that have Mac, quit you know, in them. there's a lot of teams with glass jaws. You all you got to do is hit them in yeah. the right spot and they'll fall. Kawhi Leonard with 25 of his 30 <laughs> after halftime. As closers go in the NBA right now, Who's better than Kawhi? It's hard, man. I mean, the, the, the guy that you can only say maybe better is sitting out in Brooklyn right now. <laughs> Kevin Durant, yeah. we start to my closing. But look, the thing that's so amazing about him, he just gets to his spots where he wants to go, and he has such control over the basketball 
with those hands, with his handle. And once he gets you on that hip, B-Shaw, it's over because he's too strong and too powerful to just for you to do anything. I don't know, is there a guy in the league that can guard him? I don't think so because there's so many different ways he can beat you. You know, he can he can shoot uh, efficiently from the three-point line. As you just mentioned, he can get to whatever st spot he wants to get to on the floor. Uh, and, and he can also, once once he gets that shoulder by you, he can hold you off, you know, get to that mid-range game. He defies all analytics because his mid-range is the best Unbelievable. part yeah. of the game. And then on top of that, uh, usually on a, on a night-in, night-out basis, he gets to the free-throw line, you know, and so... Um, when you can score in all those different facets, it's hard to game plan against uh, because he can beat you at the three-point line. He can post you up. He can take you off the dribble mid-range and get fouled and get to the free throw line. And on top of that, when you start to send two and three people to try to stop him, he's a willing passer as well to get his teammates involved. He is tough to beat that. He was 10 of 12 from the free throw line tonight. Yeah, and you're just not talking about a one-trick pony that just, I'm just going to shoot threes. And, and, and you know, I'll jump back, step back. He's going to get fouled. He's going to attack. And the thing I like about him, I mean, we've all been in tight games, and you've got the last two minutes of a game. A three is great. But you got to keep that clock. You got to keep that board clicking in your favor. Yep, hey, right. one point off a free throw, you let, you're happy to get one. He gets two, but he gets to where he wants to with the ball, and that's the thing I love about him. And he's really strong. Guys that are his size, he goes by, and smaller guys, he just shoots over, and he just he just is is so strong and so under control. I love that just that hard dribble to the dotted line, that little fade mm -hmm. shot, and he just I mean it's money. Nobody's bumping him off his line. He gets exactly whatever it is he wants. May not go in, but he's going to get the shot he wants, that's for sure. Clippers are now 5-2, and 4-0 at home for the first time in seven years. They get the win tonight, 105-94, to and even up the season series with Utah at a game apiece. Complete highlights of the entirety of the day of Sunday on the West.